it like that, keep them stable. The ideal cover also has concealment. But it was when you play right. okay. That's good shit. You did not gloss over that. Take a shot between these two. Fire only about eight inches of current. Diving behind this little tiny fucking hill like this. Dude, I ate so much <laughs> shit. <laughs> the, you're gonna have to clear that fucker out. Yes. <laughs> so you brought up barrel lengths earlier. Like, what's the ideal barrel length for me? As a joke. Well, let's talk about it. We're talking. We're talking like building guns. We're talking gun setup. We're talking equipment selection. Um, you guys have all, from what I can see, made pretty good um, equipment choices. Um, I tend to say, basically, my rule of thumb is go with the longest barrel length. You can still do 90% of the work that you have to do. Um, right. Um, I have one 10.3 and it's just because I wanted to clone the Mark 18 that I used to use. Um, it's not even 100% clone. I don't care about that stuff. It was just kind of a nostalgia trip for me. Um, I even I didn't even make it a 10.3. I just could get a 10.5 barrel and it's a 10.5 because I wanted that 0.2 of muzzle velocity. Uh, but that's what it buys me, um, muzzle velocity. It's easier to shoot a flatter shooting gun. It stays flatter longer, I can shoot it further. Um, bullets actually get less accurate or less precise um, the further out they go. Uh, I did a little bit of ballistics talk on fucking Insta like a couple weeks ago. But the reason our bullets are spun is because they're butt heavy, they're ass heavy, right? Um, you throw an object, you, you guys remember the Nerf footballs? Right, they have drag at the end and the weight up front, like those little fins in the back. Oh, those, yeah, okay. Stabilize it. Right, um, the, the, th the thing that keeps it from tumbling, um, like when you're throwing a football, is the spin. Otherwise, it would be just kind of doing this. Um, the thing that keeps the Nerf football from tumbling is not necessarily the fact that it's got those fins on the back, but because the weight's up front. Those are adding extra aerodynamic stabilization um, because of like wind slip streams and stuff like that. But um, so a 55 grain bullet looks about like this. The center of gravity is probably like here. Um, a match grade bullet. I got a eraser right here. Can everybody see this by the way? The match grade bullet is gonna look I would definitely, since we're talking equipment selection, I would definitely, definitely push you guys to um, stock up on some match grade. Uh, if you're shooting anything shorter than like a 12 and a half, maybe not. Maybe you need the velocity more than you need um, ballistic coefficient. Um, but especially for zeroing, knowing what your gun is capable of, get a ammo that's a little bit more of a precise load. Um, you'd be surprised what your like rat grade AR can do in terms of like actual precise shot placement. I have never had ever, um, except in the army where they were just totally fucking blown out barrels. I've never had a decently non shot out barrel shoot anything bigger than a half MOA ever when I put good ammo through it. Like when somebody's like, it's a one MOA gun. I'm like, I think you're probably a one MOA shooter. Um, not to be insulting or anything, but I've never seen, never seen it. Like the guns are usually pretty good. It's possible that you got like a chamber job that somebody just did with their dick or something and it's just really fucked up. But all right, so this is what like your standard 55 grain looks like. This would be like what a 77 grain looks like. Um, part of the length here um, is to give it more weight, which means it retains velocity better. Um, part of the length here in the Ode Jive um, and Miplat are, did somebody scoff at me? 
All right. Keep your cough to a minimum, please. Sorry. Um, that sorry little tiny, what was it that Kyle told you to call me? Oh, a little special K. A little special K. That's sorry little special K. Roger. Um, this shape here has been engineered by literal fucking rocket scientists. Um, it has to be like the best wind break. And a lot of times they'll have what's called a burble in front. Have you guys seen like the open tip? Mm -hmm. They're not hollow points, technically. They're uh, open tips. A lot of that is just, it's a manufacturing. It's like leftover from like when they jacket it. However, they have found that it acts as a center of low pressure. Like wind has to follow the contour of this thing and it has to go in here and come back out at the same speed as all this other wind around it. Since it has to travel a longer distance, it gets thinner, which actually creates a low pressure pocket and helps it cut through the wind better. Weirdly enough, like have you seen those like weird little flaps hanging off the back of like trucks? Same kind of thing is happening there, it's just on the back end. Um, golf balls, the little dimples on a golf ball, that's the exact same thing. It's creating an air pocket for itself. Yeah. Um, that's just thrown in there. Uh, <laughs> this is a lot more, um, believe it or not, rear heavy than a lot of things. The reason it's got a boat tail on the back is to um, take some weight out of the back end and move. Since this is so narrow up here, its center of gravity is still pretty dang far rearward. Ideally, it would be like here or here. Um, but like you'd, you'd be able to shoot it like at like a one in 20 twist or something like that. You can shoot a 55 grain at like a one in 12 twist because I kind of misspoke. The center of gravity is, is further to the rear, but not as far back as this because we're sacrificing weight distribution for aerodynamicy um, and weight. Higher twist rate because the center of gravity is further back um, needs to be spin faster in order to keep the thing going ass over elbow kind of thing like that. This would probably like a one in seven twist, one in eight twist. <sighs> the reason they get less accurate further out is A, they're not retaining momentum, so they stop spinning. Um, and then they start wanting to do this kind of thing. Uh, there's also the fact that they're going faster than the speed of sound. And you ever seen like pictures of like, F-16s and stuff where they have like this just ring of vapor like right behind them. Um, that is an aerodynamic, like that's a sonic boom. It's like an aerodynamic disturbance. Um, if you're, you guys know that like shooting suppressed versus unsuppressed, you're not actually so much like, you're just deadening the pop of the rifle, it's still got that supersonic crack, right? When that crack actually catches up with the projectile and it passes back through the sound barrier, it's very destabilizing. So you have that destabilization of air and sound waves on top of the fact that the thing is now not gyroscopically stabilized and it wants to just sort of start flipping and doing that stuff. It'll pass through the sound barrier again, restabilize, and then um, at the end of its accurate like gyroscopic stabilization, start doing all kinds of crazy shit. So barrel length, equals muzzle velocity equals I can actually shoot it further because it's got more speed before it hits that, that tumbling phase. This, I, I generally only shoot 62 grain out of this because I'm only really ever going to be doing longer range shit. Um, I do have a dot on it. Um, I'll probably throw 55 grains through that and clear through a house just so I'm practiced doing it with a long gun, but 